Good morning. So uh, my name is Arthur Breitman. Uh, I work on a uh, blockchain project called uh, Tezos. And I'm going to be talking uh, about uh, blockchains as coordination technology uh, and, and trying to give a sense of what it is exactly that they do uh, and, and, and what they can be good for. So uh, there's a, uh, a French philosopher, Etienne de la Boétie, who wrote the uh, uh, treatise on uh, voluntary servitude. Uh, and in this treatise, he wonders how can it be that um, you can have a tyrant uh, in power, uh, and he's just a single person, uh, and you have a population that could be in the millions. Uh, they do not recognize his legitimacy, and so they could very easily topple him, but for some reason they don't. And, uh, and the question is, well, you know, uh, as a, uh, is that voluntary servitude? Uh, and the answer to this paradox uh, in, in game theory is known as a prisoner's dilemma. So in a prisoner's dilemma, you have two prisoners um, who are being interrogated, and they can either decide that you know, they're going to dish on the other one and say, you know, he did it, give all the information, in which case they will both get a, uh, um, both of them will get a heavy sentence if they both uh, betray each other. If they collaborate, they get a light sentence. And, and here's the problem, if one collaborates and the other one betrays, the one who betrays goes free. And so in this scenario, you might look at this and say, well, clearly, you know, they would benefit by collaborating with each other and, uh, and, uh, and, and not betraying each other. However, if I don't know what the uh, other prisoner is going to be doing, I say, well, you know, is there, uh, is there they're going to betray me, in which case I should betray them, I might as well, or they're not going to betray me, in which case I still benefit from betraying them. And so both sides can uh, think the same thing, and they, can be and they both betray each other, uh, and you get this poor outcome. And um, this is described as the fact that what is a, a Nash equilibrium, so a Nash equilibrium is the equilibrium you have in a game when uh, every side reasons independently of the other by saying, okay, you know, they're going to follow a strategy, and regardless of which strategy I'm go they're going to follow, I need to find what strategy I'm going to follow. So that's a Nash equilibrium. Well, what we would like is something called a Pareto equilibrium, and in a Pareto equilibrium, you're in a solution where everyone, you know, you can't make every, anyone better off by changing things. And so clearly, in the case of the prisoners, they could be both better off uh, by not betraying. So you don't have a Pareto equilibrium, but that's an, and, and that's a problem. How do you get there? Uh, interestingly, the way they can get there is not communication. All right, you can even if they can talk to each other. It's not, you know, it's not clear that it helps because talk is cheap. They can keep talking, they can keep exchanging information, but at the end of the day, once they've done, you know, once they've done discussing, uh, they're still going to be faced with the same decision. The one thing that can make a difference is contract. Uh, if they are able to make a contract with each other, they can do credible commitments, a contract with some penalty uh, for breaking the contract. So if they can have this ability to coordinate with, real, with something real at stake, with value, with money, then, then perhaps now they can start coordinating. So that's a generic idea of how you solve uh, the prisoner's dilemma. And it turns out that uh, you, can, you, you can solve all of these uh, problems uh, in game series where you have everyone could be better off if only people co collaborated, but they can't collaborate. Um, all of that, in, in, at least in theory, can be solved by contracting, if you let people have self-enforcing contracts. Now, the problem is contracts can be difficult uh, to create, and they can be expensive. And so one of the, uh, uh, the interests of uh, this blockchain is that they allow this type of cooperation. Now, when people talk about uh, this blockchain's network, like, uh, like Bitcoin, for example, uh, a very common... Um, uh, metaphor is to look at the internet and people say oh look it's just like the internet it's all these people communicating with each other but I think that what this metaphor misses is that it's not about it's it's, it's not about communication it's not about data it's really about putting something valuable uh, at stake when uh, 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 when coordinating. So what can you do with something that lets you coordinate? Well, the first thing you can do is you can do money, right? So 
uh, blockchains are mostly known for powering cryptocurrencies. So you can build these units, you can trade in those units, and that, it turns out, is a really important building block uh, for contracts. Money is coordination, right? It's, a, uh, it's the idea that we're all going to agree that we're going to give some value uh, to some unit, and I'm going to agree to accept it with um, the idea that someone else might accept it uh, in the future. Uh, money is the closest thing that we have to a real, uh, to, to some sort of real social contract. Um, you will see a lot of users of blockchains being discussed uh, because obviously uh, this was a big surprise that you could uh, that you could do money like this that it could work and so there's a lot of hype around uh, blockchains and there's also a lot of solutions which don't necessarily make sense. So. Um, one thing to be aware of, uh, you'll see sometimes a problem, and people will say, well, clearly, you know, we could solve that problem uh, uh, if, if, if somehow we could throw a new technology at it, we can solve it. So if there's data in my problem, I'm going to take that data, and I will put that data on a blockchain. And since blockchains can hold data, and since my problem involves data, and since blockchains are good and new, then it's going to solve my problem. And that generally um, doesn't work. There's been a focus on uh, traceability, on tracking information, uh, saying, oh, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're going to put the information on where goods came from in the blockchain. Uh, most of that doesn't, actual, doesn't quite actually work because it doesn't tap into the ability of blockchains to work as coordinating mechanism. So I think that if you're looking for uh, purported solutions using blockchain, you have to look for this uh, coordination uh, element. And so uh, today when you look at uh, this public's blockchain and the type of, uh, of things that they do, uh, so you, you have this one, this one side who says, look, we can do all of these things, but, but they're, not very, uh, they're not necessarily compelling uh, applications outside of really money and, uh, and, and contracts. And you have another side that, that looks at this and says, well, sure, you, know, you can do money and contracts with these blockchains, but you could do all of that with a database, right? You know, why, do you need, why do you need decentralization at all? Why do you need to go through the complicated exercise of having a cryptographic protocol, a peer-to-peer -peer network, nodes talking to each other? You could just have a single company doing that, or you could have the government run it. You know, why isn't the government running a cryptocurrency? And the conclusion that some people reach is they look at this and say, well, clearly, the only reason you might want to not run this as, uh, you know, as, as a government database is because you're trying to break the law and you know, all this Bitcoin and uh, all, all of that, this is all for, for criminals. And that's, that's a very dangerous argument because the argument that these people are making is that whenever people are trying to reclaim some power, to reserve some power for themselves and not completely give it away for the government, somehow they're doing something bad. And the implication here is that government is always necessarily virtuous. And we know that's not the case. There's plenty of uh, evidence to that. Governments have killed hundreds of millions of people in the 20th century. Governments kill people today. A quarter of the countries on Earth are dictatorships. So the idea that somehow reserving some rights for the people to, to protect themselves is somehow nefarious, is that, that itself is an extremely dangerous idea that needs to be fought. So to conclude briefly on, uh, on, uh, on what uh, these blockchains can do, blockchains are good at coordination. And what coordination can enable is taking diluted interest, a lot of people who are in vast numbers and share some interest, and uh, putting it against concentrated interest. Thank you.